Hi everyone, Michael here, Vegan Space Scientist. This video is about asteroid and comet impacts, but in particular, it's a warning about the possibility of people deflecting them into the Earth on purpose or accidentally. As I'm doing a PhD on the use of seismic exploration on other planetary bodies, uh, to understand them for you to, so that we can either deflect them, mine them, or colonize them. I think I'm uniquely placed to talk about this issue. If you'd prefer a text version of this, I have a link to one in the description below with references as well to what I'm talking about. Around 66 million years ago, a 10 kilometer body impacted Earth and was likely one of the main contributors to the extinction of many species at the time. Bodies of size five kilometers or larger impact the Earth around once every 20 million years. This doesn't really mean that we're overdue for one per se or anything like that. The likelihood of an asteroid that size hitting Earth tomorrow is roughly the same likelihood as an asteroid that size hitting Earth the day after the previous one. The, uh, the risk is constant and they happen once every roughly 20 million years. Asteroids one kilometer or bigger impact Earth once every roughly 500,000 years. Smaller bodies than this can still do considerable damage and they occur much more frequently. For, for example, 10 meter wide bodies impact the Earth on average once every 10 years. As an example, in 1908, a roughly 20 meter sized body exploded in the air uh, about five kilometers above Siberia near the Tunguska River in what's known as an airburst, where the, the pressure and the heat caused the body, the, the body to just expand, uh, sorry, explode in the atmosphere. Um, and this flattened about 2,000 square kilometers of forest, which is an enormous area. No humans were killed, but imagine if that had blown up above a city instead. It seems reasonable to say that the first category, so over five kilometers or bigger, would pose an existential threat. It has a chance of wiping out all humans or all life in general on Earth. Smaller bodies still pose major catastrophic threats. A catastrophic threat refers to any event that would cause substantial damage and suffering, but wouldn't be expected to kill all human life uh, and that humanity would eventually rebuild. Given the likelihood of an asteroid impact, and from here on I'm going to use asteroid instead of saying small planetary body or asteroid and comet or something just for brevity, given the likelihood of this, some argue that further improving detection and deflection technology are critical. Gavrik Matheny in 2007 in his paper, which I'll link below, he estimates that even if asteroid extinction events are improbable, due to the loss of future human generations if one were to occur, asteroid detection and deflection technology research and development could save a human life a year for around $2.50 US. He's talking about mostly the fact that if a, if a major impact were to occur and to wipe out all human life, that would not just mean the death of, say, roughly 7 billion people, it would also mean a loss of future potential generations. And I'd argue as well that future lives matter and we should you know, be considering them. And so if we uh, miss out on all these future lives, that is that which we expect to be having net positive lives, at least let's say, then this is a bad thing. Asteroid impact mitigation is not thought to be the most pressing existential threat compared to some other ones like artificial intelligence or global health pandemics, whether they're natural or manufactured. And yet it already seems to have a better return on investment than even the best now-centric human charities. The main purpose of this video is to explore a depressing cautionary note in the field of asteroid impact mitigation. As we improve our ability to detect and in particular to deflect asteroids with an, in an Earth intersecting orbit away from Earth, we also improve our ability to deflect asteroids into Earth that otherwise wouldn't have been an issue. This was an idea that was first explored by Stephen Ostro and Carl Sagan, and I'll summarize their argument here. So firstly, uh, a dual use research of concern or a DERC, this refers to research usually in the life sciences that while intended for public benefit, this research could also be repurposed to cause public harm. So one very prominent example of this is disease and contagion research. For example, developing tools to um, understand contagions helps us, but also it might be used to like to actually create contagions in the future to manufacture them. And a classic example of this is when scientists recreated the 1918 Spanish influenza in a lab. So this is already something that we can do. This is partly due to the incentive structure in academia and research, I believe, that leads people to do this kind of research. It doesn't necessarily have clear benefits, like, like the creating of the Spanish influenza in a lab. 
that's an entirely separate issue and I, I won't go into that here. I do argue that dirks can and should be applicable to any technology that has the potential for dual use such as this. So I think we should be calling asteroid deflection technology a, a DERC due to its research concern as well. Oster and Sagan in a 1998 paper proposed that asteroid impacts could act as a double-edged explanation for the Fermi paradox. So the Fermi paradox is why don't we see any evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations when we look up into the sky? How come there's not aliens here? How come we don't see radio signals from other alien civilizations? You know, if the, if the universe is something like 14 billion years old, that's a lot of time for other civilizations to have formed. But from what we can see from here, we see no evidence for that. A lot of uh, answers people have proposed for this question. Asteroid impacts could be could be one. And so their argument goes as follows. Species that do not de develop asteroid deflection technology eventually go extinct because of some large impact. I guess you could say the dinosaurs are a good example of this. Those who do develop this technology, they also eventually go extinct because they either accidentally or intentionally deflect a large asteroid into their planet. And so they've called this the deflection dilemma, or I think someone else maybe called their argument the deflection dilemma. The question then arises, does the likelihood of a large impact increase as deflection technology is developed rather than decrease? The most pressing existential and catastrophic threats today seem to be those that are created by technology, like artificial intelligence, nuclear weapons, global health pandemics, anthropogenic global warming, rather than natural events like asteroid impacts and supervolcanoes or gamma ray bursts. Our likelihood of becoming extinct on a per year basis, so how likely are we to go extinct in any given year, has skyrocketed, I think you could argue, in the last hundred years as we've developed these technologies like nuclear weapons that could potentially wipe out all human life or most of human life. Humanity has survived for millions of years, depending on how you define humanity, I suppose. But in the last 70 years, we've seen the advent of nuclear weapons and other technology that could meaningfully cause a catastrophe at any time. It seems possible, therefore, that a bigger risk will be caused by technology rather than natural risk. In another paper in 1994, Oster and Sagan were also talking about the possibility that developing asteroid deflection technology uh, at that time of writing in 1994, they'd say that developing this technology is premature, given the track record of global politics and how we tend to use technologies. So who would actually maliciously deflect an asteroid? Maybe that sounds ridiculous and that no one would actually do that. Ignoring accidental deflection, which might occur when an asteroid is moved into an Earth or a lunar orbit, say, for, for example, for research or mining purposes, or maybe we perturb the, the orbit of an asteroid by removing some material from it, such that the spin or the body changes. And through the Yarkovsky effect, which I think is a little bit uh, too much to explain here, um, it could meaningfully change the orbit of an asteroid that we otherwise, uh, that was previously not in a deflect, um, in an intersecting Earth orbit, and then could become in an intersecting Earth orbit. So there are various means for how a body could accidentally be deflected into an Earth orbit. But let's ignore that for now intentionally deflecting an orbit. There are two categories of actors, I think, that might maliciously deflect such a body. State actors and terrorist groups. A state actor, and I guess by that I just mean a, a, a nation or some someone or a subset of a nation acting on behalf of the nation, they might be incentivized to authorize an asteroid strike on an enemy or a potential enemy in situations where they wouldn't necessarily authorize a nuclear strike. Or a conventional invasion. For example, let us consider the asteroid of around 20 meters in diameter, like the Tunguska effect. Sorry, the Tunguska event. Near Earth orbit asteroids of around this size, they're often only detected several hours or several days before passing between the Earth and the Moon. If a state actor is able to identify an asteroid that will pass near Earth secretly before the global community has detected it, they can feasibly send a mission to alter its orbit to intersect with Earth such in a way that it would not be detected until it is much too late. And assuming they did their job well enough, they could deflect it to a specific target on Earth. They could they could target a specific country or a city and make sure that the asteroid landed there rather than somewhere else. And again, if they did their job well enough, it would be impossible for anyone to lay blame on, blame on them, let alone guess that anyone might have even caused this asteroid impact by malicious intent. An asteroid of this size, about 20 meters in diameter, would be expected to have enough energy to cause an explosion 30 times the strength of the nuclear bomb dropped over Hiroshima in World War II. We can temper the likelihood of this scenario by speculating that it would be unlikely for some state actor who covertly discover an asteroid and track its orbit without another actor discovering it as well. Considering 
there are a number of transparent organizations working on tracking these bodies. However, is it possible that a government organization such as NASA could be ordered to not share some information about a new asteroid? So what do we do about this problem? Even if we don't directly develop asteroid deflection technology, as, as other technologies progress, such as the fact that launching payloads is becoming cheaper over time, propulsion systems are becoming more efficient, it will just become easier over time to develop this technology anyway. Other space weapons, such as anti-satellite weapons, like um, direct descent kinetic kill projectiles, uh, miss missiles that just rely on impaction rather than explosion, or directed energy weapons, uh, space stored nuclear weapons and so nuclear missiles stored in uh, satellites for faster delivery, kinetic bombardment, as sometimes they're called in sci-fi, rods from God, which involves dropping just mass at, at a target on Earth with such velocity that it creates enormous destruction. These will all become easier with just general improvements in, in uh, relevant technology like launch technology. The question arises that even if a small group of people were to decide that developing an asteroid, developing asteroid deflection technology causes more harm than good, what can they meaningfully do about it? The idea that developing asteroid deflection technology is good is so entrenched in popular opinion that it seems like arguing for, for less or for no spending in the area might be a bad idea. It may just turn people away from that, from the idea and not and make people not listen to the proponents of this. This seems like it might be a similar situation to where AI safety researchers find themselves today. Advocating for less funding and development of AI seems relatively intractable, so instead they work on solutions to make AI safer. Another similar example is that of pandemics research. It has obvious benefits in building resilience to natural pandemics, but it may also enable a malicious or accidental outbreak of an engineered pathogen. This kind of problem is often called an information hazard. I'll just quote Nick Bostrom um, for this, who wrote about it. Information hazards are risks that arise from the dissemination or the potential dissemination of true information that may cause harm or enable some agent to cause harm. Such hazards are often subtler than direct threats, and as a consequence, they're often easily overlooked. Even me talking about this in this video could be considered an information hazard. I can only hope that the net effect of making this video is good by, uh, through the means of encouraging people to be concerned about this rather than bad by letting people know that this is a thing that they could do to cause great damage. I think both effects are happening right now. I'm just hoping on optimistic that the positive outweighs the negative here. I'll be talking a little bit more about asteroid deflection technology as an information hazard and a dual use research concern in a paper that I'm writing now uh, and will be submitting to a journal soon, hopefully. I haven't considered the possibility of altering the orbit of an extinction class body, say 10 kilometers or ish in diameter. Uh, into an Earth intersecting orbit. While the damage of such a body would be significantly greater than, say, a smaller body of around 20 meters in diameter, it would be significantly harder to alter the orbit of such a body. We also believe that we have discovered all the bodies of this size in a near Earth orbit. And so it would be, I think, a lot harder to do this covertly and without risking retaliation, because really the main motivation of why you would deflect an asteroid instead of using nuclear weapons is nuclear weapons has the issue of mutually assured destruction. If you could deflect an asteroid such that you no one can prove that you did it, you would not risk that mutually assured destruction and you could do a tactical strike on an enemy nation. The possibility of altering the orbits of these made, these larger bodies, I think should also be considered because it, it poses an existential or catastrophic threat whilst the, the much smaller bodies do not. I also wanted to talk a little bit about other space-based weapons in this video. I did mention some of them, and I also wanted to have a bit of fun comparing some the feasibility of some weapons from various sci-fi stories, but I think this video is already a little bit long, so I might do that in another video if people enjoyed this one. I think the next steps for this field of research is a cost-benefit analysis that really looks at the pros and cons of developing asteroid deflection technology in a really rigorous and numerical way, and this should be a high priority. I think such an analysis would consider would try to consider the expected value of the damage of natural asteroid impacts in comparison with the increased risk of uh, developing the technology. Uh, and there's an example of such an analysis that has already been done of this exact nature, but for global health pandemics research, and I'll link that below as well, because it's quite interesting. I think that would be a very good starting point. I think it's unclear at this time whether the benefits outweigh the risks of developing asteroid deflection technology or vice versa. At this time, I do lean a little bit towards the risks outweighing the benefits, which uh, is obviously an unfortunate conclusion for someone 
doing a PhD, researching asteroid deflection and exploration to come to, but I'm just, I guess, trying to be intellectually honest. I'm certainly someone who in the past thought that developing asteroid deflection technology would definitely be a good thing, and that it was just a matter of how do we prioritize doing that versus spending the money on and research on other things. But now I'm just not as certain. So in conclusion, I hope you at least come away from this video acknowledging that natural, accidental, and intentional asteroid impacts are very concerning. And to maybe look at the work of some organizations that are looking at how we can prevent this and other catastrophic existential risks from happening, such as the Future of Humanity Institute. And I'll have a longer list of these organizations below in the description. If you wanted to have a look at them and consider supporting their research, that would be very good. This is the first video I've done in a while on space science. So if you've enjoyed it, uh, please let me know by liking it, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Let me know what you'd like to hear next as well. Uh, I can talk, I'm very happy to research and talk about any space issue that's relevant and interesting and useful. If you didn't like this video as well, definitely please tell me. Your feedback is very important to me. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a good evening.